Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about the death of Helldivers 2. What killed Helldivers 2? What destroyed its player base and ruined the game? Well, nothing, actually. Uh, I've, been, I've been seeing a lot of tweets like this over the last few days. Reddit posts, uh, lots of social media things about how Helldivers 2 killed its community. Its player base is gone, they're vanished, etc, etc. And that can't really be further from the truth. There's absolutely nothing showing that Helldivers 2 community has died out completely. Rather, that it saw a slow, gradual decline down to levels more befitting a single player or co-op game like this. Now, before you take my word on it, let's look through many such cases. Helldivers 2 24 hour peak is 45,000, nearly 46,000. Now, you can say that, um, if I go over to here, that they did just release an update today and on previous days its player count was lower. So, let's be fair and I'll say 36,000 is about where they were averaging now. Dark Tide was at 7,800. Deep Rock Galactic was at 25,000. Vermintide was at 2,800. And Remnant 2 was at 3,100. These were kind of the closest games I could feel that I could compare to Helldivers 2. Uh, if you have a better game that could compare, Deep Rock Galactic is obviously the most comparable. Dark Tide somewhat compares, Vermintide somewhat compares. Remnant 2 I just pulled up, so I had four comparisons. But the general idea you're getting here is none of these other games come close to the player base, the, to, to, the, to the concurrent player base that Helldivers 2 has. So, to say that the game is dying is not true. I don't believe that anyone could fairly look at Helldivers 2 and say that this game is a dead game. We can see, even in the last month, that the player base, after certain updates, will spike up, go, get, go back down, spike up, go back down, and that, you know, the, the player base, while declining, obviously, is seeing the sort of slow, natural decline that you would see from games like this. Now, even though they have put out updates for new weapons, upgrades, things like that, they haven't actually put out any new factions or any real big updates to the game. So to say that th there hasn't been like a season two update or anything like that of the game. So there hasn't been this real big pullback of the players. Despite this, uh, I think most people could agree that the game since launch has seen a slow, gradual decline of its player base. For a game that is trying to be a games as a service game, um, even before their big buff patch they did a bit ago, which I'll go into more into later, their lowest the player base had gotten down to was 49,000, whereas the player base now has gone down to 35,000. Why is that? Why are so many people ditching Helldivers 2? So, I asked a bunch of my friends, and I asked a bunch of people that, you know, who, who play this game, and I got the general idea, uh, at the very least, in my opinion, I got the general idea, that the reason for this happening was linked to one of three different things. And I want to talk about these three different things. One is nerf to weapons. Okay. So, I'm going to talk more about Helldivers 2 and, like, what it is and things like that later. But for now, let's just say Helldivers 2 is a co-op game that you play with friends or with random people. There's no PvP, there's no matching against other players, anything like that. Despite that, many weapons were nerfed um, in rapid succession that the player base did complain about. Personally, I think that that is often actually a good thing. In these sorts of games, broken weapons can actually lead to the player base losing interest in the game. And if you're trying to be a game like Helldivers that is trying to have a higher skill cap and trying to be more difficult than other games, certainly, uh, as compared to Deep Rock Galactic, I think we can agree that Helldivers 2 is trying to be a more difficult game. So keeping these overpowered weapons away and keeping people from getting bored by being able to clear the content too easily could be seen as a good thing. Additionally, um, here's one thing I have to talk about nerfs to weapons. Uh, I, I did notice that just today, or maybe this was yesterday, um, Elden Ring uh, put out a patch, and on this patch, uh, they did... No, actually, this is an old patch. No, this is 16 hours ago. Then why is it timestamped wrong? What? They timestamped it wrong... That's odd. No, this is definitely the patch from today, but they put the wrong... No, they... Oh, they put the European date on it. Okay, that's what's messing with my brain here. Anyway, anyway, let, let's let's move on here. Uh, 
in this patch in Elden Ring, they did nerf many, 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 many weapons uh, across the board from the DLC. They only ended up buffing a couple of them, but for the most part, all Elden Ring did was nerf many, 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 many weapons. Despite this, Elden Ring does not seem to be seeing a colossal decrease in its player base, more so than it would from just being a single player game that will slowly lose players. And there are other games, even single player games, that will nerf down broken weapons and rebalance the game that do not see similar complete exoduses from the community. Uh, in addition to that, and we can look at this right uh, here, uh, if nerfs to weapons were the big reason that the player base was declining, we could see very easily that buffs to weapons would cause a player base to continue to go up. But on this big buff patch, the player base spiked up and then continued to go back down to where it had been before. It does not seem that weapons being overpowered or underpowered uh, is that harshly linked to whether or not the player base enjoys the game. There's clearly an underlying issue. If you nerf the weapons or you balance things to be more fair, even in a single player game, and the game is still fun, people will generally still play the game. In my opinion, it tends to be a multiplying issue that if people are playing a game they don't really enjoy, or they've kind of gotten bored of, and their weapons or their things, their class or whatever is reduced in power, that can generally be a push away effect where people will then say, this was the last straw for me, now I'm gonna leave the game. But they were probably already on the verge of leaving the game, they just sort of needed to push off that cliff to finally get off here. So in my opinion, I don't think nerfs to weapons is really what caused people to do this. And by the way, I, I do wanna defend nerfing weapons in a single player game a little bit more as well. In my opinion, especially, especially in a co-op game, you cannot have certain weapons, classes, abilities, whatever being overpowered. To put this in a Dungeons and Dragons example here, if you have a party of four in Dungeons and Dragons and one player is massively outplaying the other three players, so if one player is doing so much more than the other three players, those other three players will start feeling like secondary characters even in their own game. This causes a lot of people to get bored of the game and not really want to play it anymore. Even in games like Helldivers, if you have one player running around who's killing all the bugs, who's squashing all the big bugs, who's just using overpowered weapons and being completely dominant, that player will make the game less fun for his uh, co-op people because they start feeling like secondary characters in their own game that they are playing. Nobody likes to feel like that, okay? Uh, the second issue is that in games like Helldivers 2, which have difficulty levels and are trying to be very much more difficult games, the problem is having overpowered weapons dramatically reduces the amount of viable weapons in a game. If I can use the Turbo Ass Blaster 9000 and kill everything and get up to difficulty 9, then I feel as a player that I should be able to play in difficulty 9. Despite using an overpowered weapon to get there, I now have my ego built to the point where I feel I'm a difficulty 9 player on average. This means that 95% of the arsenal, which cannot be played at difficulty 9, is no longer viable for me, and I will now call all that arsenal underpowered because I personally cannot use it. In other words, 95% of the weapons in the game have been rendered incapable because uh, one or two or three or four weapons were so overpowered they could drag the average player up to a difficulty that they weren't supposed to be playing at. Now, I will talk, for those of you who actually have issues with the weapon nerfs, I will talk more about this later because there were actually some issues that I'm going to go over later. So just put a pin in that for a second, okay? Just if you're if you're about if you're gonna go make a comment and a hate comment and call me out, I, I will come back to this in a second. Just let me get through some other things. There was also the Sony account linking issue. Now to go over here, here was one of the most highest rated posts on Helldivers. We can see here we have officially hit mixed for all time reviews, meaning that four months worth of positive reviews have been almost wiped away in 48 hours. Within 48 hours, um, well let me explain here. Sony announced that you would no longer be able to play Helldivers 2 without linking your Sony account. However, uh, the vast majority of the world was not eligible to link their Sony account. So Sony had effectively announced that coming up in one of the uh, updates that would be happening soon, that the I, I'm not going to say the majority of players, but a large amount of the players were no longer going to be able to play the game that they had paid for. 
this kind of became a big issue. Uh, and, and I think still to this day is an issue. I still think you cannot buy the game in the regions where you cannot have a Sony account. I think even till today that is still an issue. I think. I'm, I'm not sure if that's ever been fixed. Numbers I've heard is up to 20 or 30% of Helldivers were going to have their game rendered incapable off an update that Sony was trying to push on everyone. The Helldivers 2 community rallied together and gave the game a huge negative review score. Sony Raider... Sony later relented on this issue and allowed anyone to play without linking their account, but this caused a mass exodus of players. However, once again, if I go back to it, I still believe that this isn't an issue that is going to cause everyone to leave the game. Instead, I think that once again, this is an issue that can cause people to be pushed off the cliff, that gentle little shove that they need to eventually quit the game. There seems to be a, a more general problem for why, despite pulling back on the Sony issue, and why, uh, even despite doing a large buff and rebalancing patch, that the player base continues to shrink and the players continue to go away from the game. That's what I'm going to call the general player apathy. Now, what is the general player apathy? For this, I need to go load up Helldivers 2, and uh, I hope that this... Uh, doesn't break anything. Lots of games do not like being recorded these days. There's not a whole lot I can do on that, unfortunately. But I'm going to go load up Helldivers 2, and we're going to talk for a little bit about this game and what's in it and why people might actually start getting really bored of playing it. See, Helldivers 2 is a co-op game where you play you and your allies shooting against the bugs or the robots. You go into a mission, you play for maybe, depends on how good you are, let's say 30 minutes to 45 minutes. It really depends on a lot, right? But the general idea is you and your people, they get together and you shoot bugs for a long period of time. Once you get out of that mission, um, you get some sort of experience to level up your character, which doesn't do that much. You get some requisition to unlock new weapons. Uh, you can unlock new armor. You can unlock different call-ins. You can upgrade your ship. And that's about it. And certainly, we're, we're starting to get into more of the issue of what is actually starting to play the plague this game. Let's let's look at this here real quick. If I enjoy playing a weapon in Helldivers 2, let me open the Armony. If I enjoy the Breaker Incendiary, I can't upgrade this weapon. I can't do anything with this weapon. I can't drop a better version of this weapon. This is the weapon I will be using now. As I came back in to play some games of Helldivers 2 to familiarize myself with it, this was the weapon that I continued to use. The weapon hadn't changed, I hadn't changed, the enemies hadn't really changed. I think they added one new bug and one new robot, but other than that, everything was the same. It was the same game, two, three months later. The missions don't really have as much variety as they pretend they have, and there doesn't really seem to be that much that changes. Um, that's it. As for a variety of builds or things, can you do a different build? Can you do different classes? Can you do different things? Well, no, actually. See, the thing is, once you've upgraded your ship, and let's go through these upgrades here. So like, let's say I have the bridge. One second stratagem, one second reduction to call in time for all orbitable stratagems. Increase enemy ping radius on minimap by 50 meters. Improve steering for hell divers during hell pod deployment. Blah, 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 blah. You get the idea, right? Once I have this upgraded, it is upgraded on my character and on my account indefinitely, forever. So I decide to get every upgrade to make the Eagle Bombers better. Uh, they're just better forever. There's no build I can do. I can choose different call-ins to use. So I could choose, if you see here, Eagle Cluster Bomb or Eagle Napalm Airstrike. Or I could do Orbital Gatling Garage or Orbital EMS Strike. But at the end of the day, so long as I have whichever weapon I enjoy the most, I'm done. It's done. At that point, I'm continuing to run missions forever. It gets even worse uh, because here's a, a, a really big problem that the developers didn't really think about. Let's, let's talk uh, real quick about acquisitions here. You can acquisition and acquire different things. So, for example, I could acquire a new gun. That's great. You might be saying to yourself, hey, you can acquire a new gun and then you take that new gun out in the field and you use it. And that's great. Or you can use new armor and you take this new armor. Well, OK, let's talk about a problem that's going to be happening here. Uh, most armor 
is going to be light, medium, or heavy. In fact, all armor is going to be light, medium, or heavy. Depending on that, it depends exactly on its stats. There are some armor passives, but most armor passives are generally the same. There doesn't tend to be that many new or unique ones, and they don't really do that much, and they don't really have that much variety at the end of the day. Although it can change your cosmetics and it can change things like that, it doesn't really do that much. But here's maybe where it gets a little bit more understandable. So if I have the Viper Commandos pack and I can pick up these new things and in Viper Commandos I could get uh, a paint job for my mech. That's kind of cool, I guess. I could get a throwable knife. I could get a bushwhacker shotgun, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I can get the Liberator Carbine. These all look cool, right? Now, here's the problem. This weapon that you're seeing on my end is not actually my primary weapon. It's called your primary weapon, but it's not really your primary weapon. Most people call in a weapon, and then they'll use these weapons more so as maybe their more uh, primary weapons. So this is kind of going into the weapon nerfs, and this is going into more talking about you know some of the game's issues and problems here. Um, if I am... A hell diver and I see an armored enemy I'm gonna need to kill that armored enemy I don't think there's really any primary weapons in the game that can effectively deal with armored enemies but you know what can deal with them is the stratagem calling things unfortunately uh, stratagems you can't unlock new ones ever sometimes they add new ones into the game but it's pretty rare there was a heavy machine gun that they added recently but Generally speaking, it's pretty rare for them to add new things of these into the game. Once you have it unlocked, you can play it in one mission, two missions, three missions, four missions. But I guess the question is, how long can I continue to play and use the heavy machine gun before I get a bit bored? Now, this kind of goes into the issue of armor. Uh, can we look here? Okay. Armored enemies only really die or can only really be killed, let's say, to armored uh, breaking weapons almost all the anti-armor weapons are these call-in weapons as you might be noticing this leads to a severe issue in weapon diversity uh pretty much everyone has to kind of end up using generally about the same weapons as each other because everyone needs to deal with armored enemies now if you're in a four-man squad you could have two people dealing with armored enemies but not everyone plays in groups of four with friends where everyone can sync together and know who's got enough anti-tank and who's got enough effective anti-tank to kill enemies if i want to use the flamethrower i need to know that my teammates have brought in enough anti-tank that we can kill these armored enemies in a reasonable time without getting really annoyed the entire match by armored enemies generally running around and being unkillable for long periods of time until maybe the one player who can deal with them has either their droppables on cooldown or their orbital strikes have come off cooldown you know well maybe not orbital strikes but let's say maybe their 50 kilogram bombs have come off cooldown and they can use these to uh, actually kill the big armored enemies so, so long as I've gotten a heavy machine gun, that's it. The heavy machine gun, I've unlocked, that's it. For the entire rest of the game's history, I am done. At that point, a match starts, I call in my heavy machine gun support, I grab my heavy machine gun, and that's it. For the entire rest of this game's history, my heavy machine gun is maxed. It is done. Why do I continue to play missions then? I, a lot of people start to ask themselves that same question. But why do you, in a literal sense, what is the literal game reasoning for why you would do that? Well, it's this. It's a galactic war. And uh, we can see here a message, an incoming message from Super Earth. Okay, so we can see there's an actual war going on out here, right? And these points can be taken by Super Earth. And these points can be taken by enemies. We've got updated things. If you're into this, that's great. Like, this is cool for people who are into this, right? They got, like, writings and stuff. We can see how much they're liberated. We can see how many different Helldiver players are in each different area. Everyone seems to be on the bugs. Nobody seems to be on the robots. This is a recurring problem that doesn't really seem to be getting addressed. Uh, but, you know, and then... We got major orders, we've got some fluff writing here, some cool stuff to do. But what do you do then? How do you participate in 
uh, the major orders. How do you deal with this stuff? Well, you, you just go and you do missions and you spam missions. The more missions you do, the more liberated a planet becomes. And the less missions you do, the less liberated it becomes. You can see the liberation here actually updating in real time. The more people are completing these missions and doing this stuff, the more liberated it becomes, which is good. It's cool, right? You can see the progress in real time. So what's the downside? The downside is you are encouraged to sit here and spam the same planet over and over and over again. And you will have some mission variety for sure. And you will have some different things you can do. But I'm sitting here just fighting bugs over and over and over again. Four hours, eight hours, for very long periods of time. There's not that many differences between planets, but there are enough to kind of keep things fresh. But at the end of the day, once you've played on a planet for four, five, six, seven, eight hours, you're starting to feel a little bit bored of it. Uh, additionally, those of you who've been playing, um, raise your hand if this is you. If you played this game three, four, five hundred hours, you probably have started to see each different planet type a lot. And you can kind of start recognizing each different planet type, which kind of gets a bit uh, boring, let's say it that way. But this is exactly the problem. You're encouraged to sit here and spam the game forever until... Ready for another well, let's talk back. about that. We need to close the game here for a second. You're continued to... S you're encouraged to sit here and spam this game forever until you build player apathy and once you're tired of the game and once you're frustrated of the game and once there's not really that much new content being added there's not many new enemy types being added there's not many interesting new things being added to the game and once that starts to happen and once you start to get bored any of these issues any other issue can be the issue that makes you stop playing the game and do you look forward to playing the game again? No, no, you do not look forward to playing the game again because you know when you come back to the game, you're gonna be getting your favorite weapon. You're probably gonna have to get a bunch of anti-tank. You don't really have that many choices for anti-tank. And you're going to be slotting up to fight the same bugs or the same robots again and again and again. Not much has changed, not much is different. It's the same game. Now, look, a lot of you guys might say that this is fine because, well, in the past, this is how games used to be. I think people forget really heavily that in the past, people used to play new games every couple of months. You didn't used to sit on one game as a game as a service for years and years on end. I know in the past decade, this has kind of changed everything. And I know in the last decade, everyone wants to be you know, the, the World of Warcraft, the League of Legends, the Fortnite, right? Everyone wants to be the permanent game that is millions of players every day. But the blunt matter of the fact is that that's just simply not every game can be that game. And not every game has the resources needed to keep things like that fresh. At the end of the day, uh, Helldivers 2 doesn't have enough mission variety so let's use this as, as all, let's compare this to, to, for example, League of Legends or Fortnite, right? In a PvP situation, um, there's generally enough differences between what classes your opponent chooses, what weapons your opponent chooses. Uh, Fortnite in particular shifts things up constantly. Fortnite is constantly changing the meta, constantly balancing, constantly adding and removing uh, weapons, vehicles, whole things from the game. They're constantly changing things in the game to keep things fresh. Uh, in addition, just the unexpectedness of PvP means that games will feel very varied and very unique each and every time. On the other hand, uh, when you play Helldivers 2, for example, how many armored bugs are there? There's the Charger, there's the Bile Titan, Well, I mean, is that it? Is that literally it? It's it's literally the Charger and the Bile Titan. So every time the game decides to throw a big armored enemy at you, it's going to throw a Charger at you, or it's going to throw a Bile Titan at you. And boy, it really does get boring. I, I think many of you might agree with me on this one. Hell, Helldivers 2 was a great game, and I do enjoy playing it, and I did enjoy playing a lot of it, and I thought it had some really interesting, new, clever 
uh, additions to the to the shooter genre, and I actually really did like it for that. But man, having to stick to let's say meta weapons because you you can't just go a flamethrower and a shotgun because then I I, I mean yes the flamethrower can eventually kill chargers, but certainly not at the rate that you would maybe enjoy killing chargers at. Um, so generally speaking, uh, and I did, I played a bunch of matches when I came back and I played it before making this video. And let me tell you folks, let me tell you, it's pretty clear to me that if you do not get a player in your party who has dedicated anti-tank weaponry and is, is very on the ball and taking out armored enemies, missions can get so boring. Dodging chargers for 10 minutes at a time, every time chargers decide to show up, gets really old. However, if you do have a player who can very quickly eliminate chargers and remove them from the game, boy, the game plays a lot more fun and more interestingly. But it kind of relies on just playing the same way you've always played forever. You just have to continue to play Helldivers the same way this month, last month, two months ago, three months ago. You're playing the same game in the same way forever, which leads to general player apathy. Here's my opinion. This issue was always here, okay? I think when the game was new, people played on lower difficulties, and they didn't notice how bad this issue was with kind of going with the same loadouts. Now look, if you're good at the game, you can take any loadout you want. If you're good at the game, you can do anything you want. I agree, right? But it doesn't even matter if you're good at the game or if you're bad at the game. Like, you need to take certain loadouts that can deal with your enemies. I think we can all agree on that. You have to take weapons that can beat your enemies. Depending on what I like, that loadout might look a certain way. Depending on what weapons I like, I know that there's certain weapons and certain things I can do to take to fight the bugs. That list might be limited. Other people might like different things they can do, and they might take slightly different things, but their list is also limited. These lists are very limited, and there's just not that much variety playing through these levels. Now, look, I, I know lots of people have played uh, Left 4 Dead 2. In fact, let me... Let me actually look at Left 4 Dead 2 Steam charts here. Left 4 Dead 2. Holy mother of God. That is... An unbelievable number, actually. Holy crap. Left 4 Dead 2. I, I thought I was being an idiot by Googling this. I thought I might prove myself wrong by doing this. I, I honestly I honestly thought that I was going to look this up and it was going to have like 700 players. Dude, Left 4 Dead 2 to this day has a 41,024 hour peak. Only a little bit less than Helldivers 2. I'm gonna use Left 4 Dead 2 here. Left 4 Dead 2, despite not having that much variety, creates variety in environment. It creates a variety in the environment by making different levels, different stages, allowing you different weapons, allowing you different uh, paths through levels, having different areas where you get attacked and ambushed, etc. Left 4 Dead 2, in my opinion, is the premier game in having a co-op experience. Uh, it, it's the premier game, in my opinion, of having a co-op experience that just continues to be enjoyable forever and ever uh, because it creates very diverse content. Helldivers 2 has had an issue, and this issue has always been here. Unfortunately, it has always been here. And look, I'm not saying they can't fix it. I'm not saying they can't add more bug types. I'm not saying this issue will be here a month from now, a year from now. But I am saying there's a very clear issue, in my opinion, where the variety of the content you experience in the game is not a big enough variety. And this game will unfortunately get boring there is a general player apathy and in my opinion um the player base will continue to dwindle despite the game not being dead which is the point of this video i do think that helldivers 2 is a good game and i do think it is a fun game and i do think a lot of people enjoy playing this game but i do think it has reached its peak unfortunately um of 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 interest let's say it's reached its peak of interest where players just, uh... I realize my camera's been pointed a little bit, uh, off-center this whole time. Uh, it's kind of reached the peak of its players in interest, and I don't think 
They're going to have to do new things. And I do have high hopes they will do new things. But I do agree. I, 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 do, I, I don't think that the game is dying. But I don't believe it's because of, of metagaming it to death. I don't think patches and balance changes had anything to do with it. I think the issues are more so sort of core to the game experience and the lack of its diversity. So that's all I have to say. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, everybody. And uh, as always, I hope you have a great rest of your day.